Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 99.5 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I've had a pretty interesting week. Um, dude, my fucking... How was your week? Sorry, I'm rude. I'm just getting into, into me before talking to you. How was your week? Was it alright? So I'm just fucking with the, the fucking microphone here. I'm stalling. There we go. That's better. Sorry about that. How was your week? I should restart the podcast. That was a horrible start. To the po- I should restart it and you know what? I'm not going to. <laughs> I just won't. How was your week? Was it good? Did you have a good one? I, I've had it just a... F- mm. One of those weeks where you think about it and you just go, mmm. One of those fucking weeks. My, um... So as you know, I've set up a storage unit uh, to film in. I've, I rent a, I've been renting a storage unit uh, going in there once a week just to film bi-monthly ball. Uh, I am yet to move the Lurieview shelf in there, but that's the goal. I want to move that in there maybe this week in the next couple of days so that that way, go to the radio station, and then I just go around the corner, film bi-monthly ball, film Lurieview, and then uh, it's all centralized in one location rather than fucking doing it at home and then freaking out because as soon as I get to my bedroom, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not a relaxation space, it's a workspace, I'm stressed. <laughs> I just want to play video games in here and have a wank, but I can't stop thinking about all this shit I'm going to do. Um, the storage unit has been wonderful. It's been great until I got a call yesterday uh, that it flooded. Now... I don't know if you guys are across the weather in Melbourne, but uh, it's not raining. Hasn't rained for days. Hasn't rained all week. So I'm like, all right, how the fuck did it flood? And they go, we need you to come in today to assess the damage. And I was like, oh, sweet. How much rain was it? And she goes, oh, there was about 10 mils of rain. And then I'm thinking, well, hang on. How the fuck was there 10 mils of rain? It hasn't rained. There's been no rain. They're trying to blame this on the rain when there is... Has there only been rain inside the fucking storage unit center? What's going on? So I'm like, all right, I'll be in there today. And they go, sweet, we'll see you today. Anyway, the next day, I go there. (laughs) I I just told them, yeah, I'll be in there today because they really wanted me to go in that day to assess the damage. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll be there that day. Couldn't be fucked. I think I was editing or doing something. I don't know. I wanted to put out a video. So I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll go in there tomorrow. I'll just tell them I'll be there today. (laughs) Keep them on their toes. So the next day I go in there and uh, I'm annoyed because I go in and there's like a back entrance, right? So what I wanted to do is there's a back entrance with like a digital code to get in. So you put in your code and then the gate opens automatically and you can go in there without talking to anyone. Perfect. My ideal interaction with a human is one that doesn't exist. I don't want to walk in there every day and be like, Hello, can I access my storage unit? No. Half the reason... I'm doing that shit is so that I'm not surrounded by people so I can scream cunt into the darkness and nobody hears it. That's why I'm that's why I'm there. I don't want to talk to nobody. So anyway, I go there, I go around the back entrance because I wanted to go in there and thoroughly assess all of the equipment and all of the gear in there without them. And then go to the head office and get them in. And then I can go, this is fucked, that's fucked, this is fucked. Anyway, I go around the back entrance. My code doesn't work. The code doesn't work. So they've locked me out of my own storage unit to force me to go through the reception. So I'm like, alright, I'll do that. I'll play that game. And, I, and when they did that, I'm freaking out. Because in that storage unit, it's like thousands of dollars of equipment. Like... It's because I use the Patreon money and I just throw it into the hole. So I'm like, sweet, if I get a film space, I'm going to deck that shit out. I've got like hectic LED lights. I've got a massive tripod with a camera. I've got a, I've got a monitor screen so I can see what's happening. I've got the green screen in there for bi-monthly bull, a power board with everything plugged into it, all of my battery chargers, all of the extra spare batteries and a spare set of lights. Fucking everything is in there. I went all out to deck that place out so I would never have to buy anything ever again. 
So I'm like, all right, if they've locked me out of it, that means that it's fucked. So I'm freaked out, I'm nervous, I'm stressed. And I go into the reception and uh, what I should have done, right? <laughs> I get into the reception, shouldn't have done this. Probably shouldn't have done this, but you know what? It made me feel better. I get into the reception and there's like three prospective clients. Because when you go there, you check out the storage units, you check out all the prices, whatever. You, you, know, you have a look and then they try and sell you the big ones and you go, no, I just want a small one. All that shit, right? So there's three prospective clients looking to sign up for the storage unit center. And what I should have done, guys, is I should have walked up to the receptionist and said, Hi, my name's Lewis. Um, I have an appointment with this guy uh, to check out my storage unit. That's what I should have done. But instead, <laughs> in front of all of the people who have not signed contracts yet, who are looking for a secure storage place to keep their whatever they want to store nice and safe, nice and secure, not fucking wet. I go up and I say quite loudly in front of all of the people who are thinking about signing up to that storage unit. Hi, I'm Lewis. I'm here to see the flood damage in my storage unit. <laughs> <laughs> and every person sitting there was like, Oh, why did you say it in front of the clients? Why did you say it in front of everyone? I'll tell you why. Because it hasn't rained, but somehow my storage unit flooded. So the receptionist, she she gives me the terrified eyes like I'm a car that's about to hit her. She's like, I can't believe you just said that in front of everyone. And then all of the prospective clients looked at me and was like, Whoa, dude, these guys are flooding? It's not even raining. How the fuck are they flooding? Should I really sign up here? I don't think I should keep my comic book collection here. Fuck. <laughs> Shouldn't have done it, but it made me feel a lot better. And I still feel good about it. Every now and then, I think... I think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But I don't feel guilt. I just feel excited. Because <laughs> I did do it. So the woman, she goes out and she gets the the boss. And the boss is like just about to sign contracts with a prospective client. And then the guy is like, I think the guy had to go and check out and pick which storage unit he wanted to use. So the, the owner goes, oh, hey, Lewis, um, I'll be with you in a second. I'm just doing this with this guy and then we'll both go down to the basement together because um, he needs to check out the unit that he wants to get and then I'll take you to your unit. Still, he's not saying anything about the flood damage but I haven't forgotten and I'll be like, yeah, sweet, Is um was the whole basement affected or was it just my storage unit with the flood damage? <laughs> In front of the other cunt and the other guy looks at me like, wait, your storage unit is flooded? How did it flood? There's been no rain. Should I keep my comic book collection here? What's going on? And then the owner gives me the eyes like, dude, I'm trying to make money here. What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm trying to figure out how I can get into my fucking storage unit and why it's flooded when it hasn't rained. So anyway, he finishes talking to this other client and then he goes, all right, both of you guys come with me. We'll go downstairs to the basement. Where the flood damage is? I didn't, I didn't do it a third time. I, I conveyed my message well enough, I think. Anyway, so we get, uh, we walk past the elevator and the guy decides to explain how the basement flooded. And he goes, yeah, so what happened is one of the pipes burst in the toilet and somehow it got into the basement. We don't know how it happened. Gee, I don't know, maybe gravity? You think about that one? Stephen Hawkins, huh? Maybe it was gravity. Maybe because water goes downwards. Fuck. Anyway. So then we get... So then this is in front of the other client too. So the, the other dude's a little bit freaked out. Thinking about, oh, should I actually sign up here? So we get into the elevator and we start going down. And uh, the owner is ignoring me. Because he's got my money. He's got my money. He's focusing on the other dude. He's trying to do a sales pitch on the other guy while at the same time showing me the damage that has been caused to my shit in their care 
because one of their pipes burst and it flooded while it was not raining. <laughs> so it's so I found it, it's just their fault. It's just them. <laughs> Wasn't a natural disaster. Dude, when they called me, I was like, oh, how much rain was there? And the woman said, oh, about 10 mils. It's not rain. That's fucking shit water. You, you let me believe that it was rain for like 48 hours. And now I get there and you tell me it's fucking piss water. We're in this, the elevator. We start going down. And then uh, the guy, the owner starts pitching the other guy on the basement. He's like, so uh, this is how you get down to the basement. Um, I'll take you to your storage unit. The basement's really good. And I'll show you where your storage unit is. And the other guy goes, oh, with all the flood damage. <laughs> oh, fuck. So he's freaking out about it. And then the owner just goes, ha ha, yeah. Just, and that's it. He had nothing to say. He's just like, yep, with the flood damage, this fucking, why does he have to say it in front of a customer, dude? Trying to make money here and you're yelling about flood damage. So we get down and then the, the owner takes, the owner, incredibly smart, separates me and the prospective client as quickly as possible. He just leaves me, goes, hey man, you wait here, I'll take you to your locker. And I'm thinking, I know where my locker is. I come here once a week to film shit. Okay? You don't need to take me there. So I go to my locker and there's a new lock on it. Which means they got into my storage unit to assess the damage before me and then put a lock on it so I couldn't come in without them. So he takes the other guy off and the other guy disappears and checks out his own storage unit, whatever. Then the owner comes back and lets me into my own storage unit. And then I, ha I have a look and um, he goes, all right, so uh, this is this is the storage unit. We had about 10 mils of, of, uh, of water come in here. Um, so a few things are wet. A few things. How about everything? <laughs> he goes, a few things are wet. I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, so... And then he goes, all right, so I'll just leave you to it. I'll lie you, you leave me to it, will you? Will you leave me to it? Will you just leave me in here? And then what happens if I find something broken? What are you going to do? Oh, that sucks. Bummer. I'm not going to pay for it, though. <laughs> anyway, so he leaves and I start going through all of my shit. Making sure that it's all okay. And thank fuck, all of the electric stuff is totally fine. Um, because all of the lights were on tripods, the camera was on tripods, um, and all the batteries and stuff were on the desk that I filmed by a monthly board because I didn't want to leave them on the floor. Um, the only thing that was wet was uh, a couple of bags and uh, a box of muesli bars that I kept on the floor. Oh, no, wait. Actually, all of the carpet that was on the floor for, like, soundproofing is uh, completely soaked. Um, so then the guy fucks off and he comes back and uh, I was like, yeah, the carpet's ruined. And he goes, ah, oh, bummer, man. Do you want me to bring the fan in? And what do you mean the fan? He goes, oh, we've got a big fan. We can blow air at the carpets. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. So I've presented to you carpet that I spent money on from fucking Ikea because I think it would dampen sound your pipes have burst ruined the carpet and you're like oh I could blow on it how about buy me new carpets cunt <laughs> I'm like no don't worry about the fan just fuck off <laughs> and uh, he, he leaves and um, and then I'm just sitting in my storage unit and it just smells like fucking armpit in there now. I don't know what to do with the carpet. Do I have to throw it out now? I mean, I just, I just left it in there. I was like, you know what? I can't be fucked. I'm going to deal with this another time. And I just left, locked it up, left. The carpet's still in there. I need carpet in there. What do I do? Do I email them and say, hey, so 
Do you, do you remember when you ruined my carpet? Can I, can you pay for that? Or like the guy just left. He was just like, all right, um, do you need anything else? And I was like, no. I'm like waiting for him to say, so this is covered by insurance or if, if you find anything broken, let me know and we'll pay for it. Or here's a form that you can fill out to send to the insurance company. We'll cover it. I'm really sorry. He didn't even say sorry. <laughs> and he just leaves. And then for some reason, I was like, oh, thanks, man. And he goes, no worries, mate. You didn't do anything. You fucked up my carpet. And I just said, thanks. I don't know what to do. Do I, what do I do? Do I fucking email them and say, hey, you owe me like $300 for carpet? Or what, what, what do I do? I, I don't understand. <laughs> because from his point of view, he's just done me a favor. I shouldn't have said thanks. Fuck, I don't know what to do, man. And also, is the car, the carpet's not going to dry, is it? It's just fuck. I'm just going to have to throw it in the bin now and buy more carpet. Fuck. I don't know what to do. Ugh. What else has been happening, though? Oh, the uh, the live episode 100 of the podcast is uh, next week on Saturday night. There's a couple of tickets left. We figured out we could fit a few more people in there because um, cause they went really quick, but then... We found out the venue venue was a little bit bigger than we thought it was. So there's a couple of tickets left. Lewspears.com slash live in Brisbane. It's the Metro Arts Theatre. It'll be a sick night. Um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff prepared for you guys. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, Lewspears.com slash live. You're going to have to type it in. You won't find it on my website. It's just for podcast listeners. Um, <clears throat> so what else has been going on? Um, dude, I, 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 Snapchat sucks. It's the fucking worst. Um, you know what it is? It's those those daily updates that like the news, like the Daily Mail put in and all of those news organizations like BuzzFeed have fucking, like I'm trying to watch a story of one of my friends uh, at a nightclub screaming and it's already bad enough. But then straight after that, some shitty story about some plus size model doing something empowering pops up and just makes me fucking mad. It's like, dude, Snapchat is garbage. You don't need to put garbage in there on purpose. It's already bad enough. Snapchat is basically like 35 of your friends screaming into the camera or filming a concert or taking a photo of their fucking brunch while they're hungover. You don't need to put shitty Daily Mail articles in there as well. Just makes me want to uninstall the whole thing. <clears throat> this Daily Mail article I saw was uh, this this plus size model called Iskra, um, fucking gorgeous woman. She's taken a photo at uh, In and Out Burger of her sitting on the bench. Where they, where they give people their food and she's wearing a hat and she's wearing a dress with like one of those sexy women's dresses where one whole leg is exposed and she's got no underwear on and she's sitting on the bench where people serve food and the Daily Mail article is billing it like an empowering thing because the guy who works at In-N-Out Burger, uh, he's like, Hey, can you get off the bench, please? We serve food there. And then the quote from this plus size model is, Yeah, you serve buns? Me too. And then it's built like this empowering thing. No. All right. No. Don't put your pussy where I eat my food. Get your pussy off the bench. You've got no underwear on. She's come from like a ball. She's been dancing all night. Get your pussy off the bench. Not cute. Not a cute photo. Just a dirty thing to do. There's some dude 
working at fucking in and out Burger on minimum wage, and then some like famous millionaire plus size model comes into in and out Burger, puts her pussy on the bench so she can take a photo. He goes, hey, uh, we serve food there. Get your dirty ass off the bench. And she goes, hee hee, I serve buns too. Not cute. All right? Because she's come from a ball. Okay? She's probably been dancing all night with her friends. And this isn't a knock to women who don't have a thigh gap. All right? I love a good... I love a woman with some hips. But if your thighs touch from your knees to your waist and you've been dancing all night with your friends with no underwear on, I detect a smelly pussy. Get your smelly pussy off the bench. <laughs> and, da- and they're like billing this as some cute little, oh, look, look what this plus size model did. She put her sweaty pussy where someone's trying to serve a burger. Isn't that cute? Fuck off. <laughs> oh man. I just I just can't I just can't handle the whole pretending like a like a plus size model is some courageous thing. It's like it's like it's so far from crea- courageous. You know, you know what's courageous? Saving someone from a burning building. You know what's not? Eating a burger every day and still getting paid $300,000 a year because you were naturally born with a skinny face. That's the thing with all of these plus size models. They're like saying that they're smashing against uh, body norms. But the thing is, every one of these plus size models still are born with an hourglass figure and a skinny face. I'm telling you, take any plus size model with like more than a million followers and look at a a photo of them where you can see their whole body and their whole face. Cover their body with your hand so you can just see their face and then put that photo next to a, a regular skinny model. There's no difference. Like Ashley Graham, that Iskra chick, uh, I, I forget, Tess Holiday. All these plus size models are like genetically gifted with incredibly skinny faces. That's the only reason why they've made it. <laughs> and they have like the hourglass figure. It's like, dude, you're not rejecting body, body norms. You're just picking and choosing the ones that benefit you financially the most it's like hey i don't like the the gen the body norm where i have to be skinny but i will take big lips hips tits and the makeup one and the hair thing and the skinny face and the jawline i'll take all of those but because i'm just not applying that one i'm a fucking hero (laughs) if your job is having photos taken of you not a hero even if you're a Burns victim, still not impressed. You know what it's like? It's like, um, it's like the, the, the equivalent to good looking guys, good looking celebrities always get called fashionable. Like women are always like, oh my God, Ryan Gosling dresses so well. Does he? Or, or was he born with like a spectacular head? Like that that's what gets me so much. I was watching this movie that where where Ryan Gosling's the main character. It's called uh The Place Beyond the Pines. I was watching it with my girl and uh in it he's like some bad boy stunt motorcycle rider and he robs banks and he's got like a neck tattoo and face tats and he dresses like a piece of shit because his character is poor. So he's wearing t-shirts that have holes in them and like army pants and dirty boots. And there was this one scene and my girlfriend looks at me and goes, man, he dresses so cool in this movie. And I just look at her and I'm like, 
Are you fucking kidding me? And then it cuts to this scene, and this is not a joke at all. You can watch the movie. Ryan Gosling is wearing a t-shirt with holes in it, and it's fucking inside out. You can see the tag on the back of his fucking t-shirt. He's not dressing well. He just has an 11 out of 10 fucking face. He's dressed like a homeless person on heroin who got dressed in the dark and put their holy t-shirt on backwards and inside out. (laughs) Oh my God. He's wearing a t-shirt that looks like he's been shot with a shotgun and he's wearing it inside out. Isn't he fashionable? No. You just think he's dressed well because he's got a fucking spectacular head. Sick of this shit, man. You show me a plus-size model who also has a fucked-up face. You can't. They don't exist. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to your head. That's the one beauty standard that no one can escape. (laughs) You got a skin condition? Fine. You can be famous, but don't let that shit anywhere near your face. Otherwise, you are fucked. You can have a skin condition from the neck down. With one arm. But as long as you have like a pretty face, you're fucking done. You're in. You're famous for life. You're an inspiration. But God help you if you're an amputee with a fucked up head. You're going to have to work at McDonald's, at In-N-Out Burger, and tell all these plus size models to get their dirty pussies off the bench. Because there is no hope for you if you've got a shit head. <laughs> Doesn't matter how well you dress, you're fucked if you have a shit head. And that's the motto. That's the main thing I want you guys to take away from this podcast. If you've got a shit head, it's time to give up. I think I'd be a lot more famous if I had a better head. I can already see you cunts writing in the comments, oh, you don't have a good head. I know. If I did, I'd be at a million on every social media platform ever. I would have a million fans. Girls would think that I'm funnier than I actually am. Why do you think Logan Paul's so fucking big? That dude can make fun of a hanging body in a suicide forest, but because he hits the gym and has a good head, he's a millionaire. I was I was watching a fucking video with Logan Paul at the airport, and he was wearing a pink maverick hoodie with a matching pink maverick head and even i thought fuck he's dressed pretty cool no he's not he's wearing children's clothes that is his own merchandise he looks like a fucking idiot but he has a good head and i was tricked into it and i know this because i wear my own merchandise all the time and no one ever is like hey cool outfit man because I wasn't born with an incredible head. I've got like a, I've got like a seven head. Maybe a six head, depending on the angle. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's, that's what it is, guys. I'm just bitter because I've got a seven head. And I, I, I wanted an 11 head. I'd be a fucking millionaire. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you've got a six head, uh, just... Give up. Get a real job. You're fucked. Dude, how funny is is seeing, like, amateur models? Like, they really want to... Like, on Instagram, they really want to be a model, but they're just not good-looking enough. They're just... And you, you, you know those friends from high school? Those girls from high school? that they're like, they're, like, really nice people. They have great personalities because... They were forced to develop one because no one, no one objectified them and let their shitty personality slide. You know how many fucking like 11 out of 10 girls have horrendous personalities, but you can't even hate them for it because you just look at their face and go, I just want to put you in an art gallery, man. I don't give a fuck about what you're talking about, but it looks sick. You, you ever notice that like beautiful people, they... They expect you to drop shit on a whim. And this is like guys or girls, like really good looking people, truly beautiful people are the f- 
fucking worst to meet up with or organize social gatherings with because they are so, and it's not even their fault. They are just so used to everyone in their life wanting to fuck them so desperately that they will drop anything that they're doing to hang out with them that minute, like right now. And if, if you don't do that as well, because you just want to be their mate, you don't want to fuck them, they get, a, they get a, offended. Because to them, that is rude. Do you know what I mean? It's like if someone treats you, if everyone, and you can't blame them, because if everyone in their life treats them a certain way, like a fucking queen, the moment someone like me treats them like just a normal person, yeah, sorry, dude, I can't meet up with you with 20 minutes notice. I got shit going on. Give me a day's notice at least, and then we can do it. They're like offended, because they can't even believe that someone would do that to them. And you can't even, you can't even get angry at them because it's like, oh, they actually don't know. They actually don't know what it's like to be a seven. (laughs) They've lived life as a fucking 10 for so long that they have no idea what it's like. Live it walking around as a six where you have to earn people's attention. You have to earn friendship. (laughs) Because you're not just good to look at how many people out there with garbage personalities have no idea because they're fucking 11s 70 percent of 11s man (laughs) all right i'm gonna stop talking about this before i end up on the news um oh quick update about the radio show it's coming back Um, Luke and Lewis, we are coming back on Monday. So if you're listening to this on Sunday, tomorrow, uh, from six until 8 PM every weeknight on triple M modern digital Search us on iTunes. If you don't have a digital radio, um, the podcast will be coming up daily as well. It'll be about the podcast should be about half an hour, but we would love for you to listen live because, uh, we want to do phone call segments. We could never do phone call segments when we were on from 12 until 2 because everyone was working. No one actually listened live. So um, if you are home from 6 until 8 p.m., please do tune in. You can listen on uh, your phone by downloading the Triple M app and finding us there or just literally Google us, uh, Luke and Lewis for lunch. We should be in like the web browser. You can listen to us on your computer live and we would love for you guys to call in. If we have call segments, um, that'd be great. <coughs> So yeah, the radio show's coming back. We've got big plans for it. And uh, it's great because we're in a much better time slot now. So obviously they like this. Uh, really cool to see that we're stepping up and moving forward in radio. It's uh, it's cool. It was a bit of a risk, a bit of a gamble, but it seems that it's paid off uh, and they like us. And uh, I think that we're quite good at it. I'm really proud of the show. I uh, would love for you guys to listen. Um, everything else will continue. In fact, I think it'll be a lot easier to do all of my content because 12 until 2 was such a shitty fucking time for the rest of my life. If you thought it was hard to listen to the show from 12 until 2, imagine how hard it was for us to fucking make the show. Like in the middle of the day, it's like, oh, I can't do anything before the show or after the show. We're just fucked. It just fucks up your whole day. So now we do it at the end of the day, do the show, go to a stand-up gig, go home. Perfect. In the in the in the morning, I can do my own shit. Hit the gym, film some videos, edit whatever the fuck. Can actually do some shit. So I'm excited for the radio show to start uh, on Monday, and uh, we got some we got some big stuff planned. Um, if you want to catch up to where, what will be will be continuing on from, listen to like the last two or three shows. It's all the Savoy bullshit. We're coming straight back into that really heavy. Uh, I don't know. What, I, what, basically, what we're going to do is rude as fuck. You'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been getting back into stand-up, speaking of, uh, as well. I had a bit of a break after the comedy special just to let all of the fucking old material leave my brain as I do, as I write a new show every year. Um, and the comedy special was the first time I've ever like returned to old jokes and old material. So um, I just took a little bit of time off to clear that out of my head. And uh, I'm going to start performing weekly again which means I should be able to vlog more often too, because the problem with, I was like, oh, I'll vlog weekly, and then I just didn't do anything interesting. Um, But yeah, I feel really good about my content. I've been weekly now for a month. They said it couldn't be done. They said, oh, you can't, I'm going to do videos every week. Oh yeah, you say that all the time. I do, and I don't expect you to believe me, but you know what, fuck you. I was right once. 
Uh, I've been weekly on the YouTube channel um, and with the podcast for a whole month. So I'm really happy with that. In fact, I've been more than weekly. I put out a vlog. Sorry about that. The um, the SD card fucked up. Um, I don't know if that. I don't know if the podcast will skip, but the SD card fucked up. I just had to switch cards there. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I've been weekly with the um, with the YouTube videos, and that's definitely going to continue. I've got a backlog of YouTube sketches um, that'll be coming out. Now, the first one I dropped was the call center one, which I was really, really happy with. I knew that one wasn't going to go, like, viral, but I knew that anyone who saw it who had worked in a call center would fucking love it. It's very niche, but people liked it. And I've, I've just I've just decided with sketches, fuck it. I'm just going to put out what I think is funny. Because um, <clears throat> for the longest time, I'm like, oh, I'm only going to put it out if it's super relatable. Um, but I'm just not a relatable cunt, so I'm just going to do all the sketches that I think are funny. So I got some real dumb shit coming, uh, in addition to the regular series. This is, this. um, Cooking Without Instructions, some more uh, episodes will be coming soon, but I'm thinking the next video I'll put out will be a Lou review. I've picked something that I think is very funny, and, uh, I'm excited to do it. Aiming for Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, I don't know, it's at my, our first week back at radio, so we don't know how six to eight will work with the rest of our content. So I'm going to aim for Tuesday, but it might come out Wednesday or Thursday. I don't know. It'll definitely be next week though. No fucking excuses. Um, yeah. All right. So with that said, was there anything else I needed to talk about? Uh, no, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end here. I don't know how long this podcast has been going for because the fucking camera keeps stopping. I think there's something wrong with my SD card. I need to get some more. Um, but I'm hoping that we're nearing at least 40 minutes or so. Um, all right, so we've got an update. As you know, I love updates. This is Miscellaneous Bit at the End. It's the worst part of the podcast. It's where I answer questions from all of you cunts. So if uh, if you have a question that you would like me to answer, uh, send it into podcast at lewspears.com. Summarize it in the uh, fucking subject line. Uh, and if you want to be anonymous, just use a fake name. Don't expect me to make one up. I'm just going to read what you send me. I'm sick of making up fake names because everyone makes fun of me because the only thing I can think of on the fly is Sarah. Um, all right. So we've got an update here. Uh, this one I'm excited about. This one was from uh, Kate. Uh, her email, she emailed in I think two weeks ago. Uh, and her email was, I'm 19 and he's 31 and he's following me around the gym. So this girl, uh, had a dude following her all around the gym while she tried to work out. Uh, she couldn't tell him to fuck off even though she really wanted to. And then for some reason, she tracked him down and added him on Facebook to say, hey, stop following me around the gym. But then she didn't say that. She just kept talking to him. And then obviously he interpreted that as her hitting on him. So he started doing it more. And essentially, I just told this girl she's walking herself into the bear's cave. Uh, and I told her to be more assertive. So she's got an update here. Um, hey, Lou, it's Kate, the train wreck again. Before I update you, I just wanted to say that I've never laughed so hard at someone basically scolding me for my idiocy. Yeah, fair enough. Watching the YouTube video had me dying of laughter, especially your face when you scream, why, after reading my second email. I think that's when I found out she added him on Facebook, but didn't say go away. Um, hearing you read the email was what I needed to hear because I was in denial about the whole thing. That's good. Though you probably won't be surprised to hear that similar things have happened to me before. I've had guys steal my phone number and one guy I had to say no to seven times. It's really a miracle that I haven't been hurt. Yeah, um, I kind of guess this might be a regular thing. Man, uh, girls really... I think women really need to be taught or everyone in general it's not just women people need to be taught how to say no like in an assertive serious way um it's like this whole thing of of teaching of of only ever saying to men uh no means no which of course you need to teach men and that needs to be said but on the flip side you also need to teach women how to assertively say no because that just makes sense um and how to tell men to fuck off properly because the way the whole dating thing works is men are supposed to approach women so if women don't properly know how to say 
go away. I'm not interested in a really strong way. It's just going to end up with shit like this where guy, fucking stupid idiot men who can't pick up on, like, soft nose and, oh, I don't really know about, I don't know. If they can't pick up on that shit, they just end up being fucking creepy cunts. Um, uh, where, where are we? All right. I followed your advice exactly and sent him a message that said this. I'm really sorry if I had given you mixed messages, but I didn't add you on Facebook to be friends. I added you so I could tell you that I think what's been happening at the gym is inappropriate and I've been too scared to tell you. I go to the gym to work out and I would really like to focus on that. Fucking perfect. That's like a 10 out of 10 fucking leave me alone, please, in a polite way. Nailed it. Absolutely perfect, Kate. Well done. He responded by saying... Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I go to do the same thing. No, you don't, you fucking creep. You go to follow around girls that are 20 years younger than you, you fucking creeper. Um, that's perfectly fine. I go, to, I go to do the same thing and I have my goals in mind. What are your goals? Fucking putting a girl in your trunk? I have my goals in mind. If you don't want to chat at the gym anymore, that's fine. I just always think it is easier with friends. Yeah, Gym is easy with friends, but you don't make friends at the gym. Never have I ever heard of someone going, Hey, I met a really nice guy at the gym. He followed me around and wouldn't leave me alone. I think I'm going to hang out with the guy. <laughs> Fucking loser. I just always think it's easy with friends. I have several people at the gym that I talk to and we chat and laugh and such. Male, female, from your age to 50. That's a fucking lie. You just... No one has multiple friends at the gym. Right? Who, who does this guy think he is? What, he walks into the gym and everyone's like, Hey, Tony, what's going on, man? Come over here, let's have a chat while I fucking bench press. No! No one's like, oh, it's that guy who talks to everyone at the gym. You're a fucking liar, man. I've got lots of friends at the gym. Yeah, and I've got a girlfriend. She just goes to a different school. You haven't met her before. <laughs> Um, uh, I got lots of people that, at the gym that I talk to, male, female, from your age to 50. This statement is completely false. I've never really seen him talk to anyone else or follow them around. Yeah, I knew it. Then things got weird. Before I could respond, he blocked me, but at the same time sent me a friend request on Facebook. I'm pretty sure he's nuts, but I was too stupid to see it. Yeah, fair. I think that's pretty fair. Um... This sounds really petty, but I'm annoyed he blocked me first after everything I did. I deserve to do it first. Okay, you, you're just, you're gorgeous. You're just, you're a beautiful little soft soul. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's not your boyfriend. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess you should have blocked him first, but you should have blocked him fucking... You should never have added him on Facebook in the first place. I don't know why you're hung up on that. Oh, man. I deserve to do it first. It's been a week since we've talked, and so far he hasn't shown up to the gym again. I think he's probably just embarrassed or plotting his kidnapping. Either way, he's not there. Yeah, it sounds... I don't know, uh, Kate. It just sounds like he was showing up when you were there because he knew your schedule. I think he's he might just be going to the gym now at the time he actually wants to go instead of when he knows you're going to be there because he's a fucking loser. Um, I'll update you if something else happens, but I doubt it will. He's hoping. He'll just move on to the next victim. However, this probably isn't the end of my stories. I'm about to go to uni for social work, so something is about to happen. I can't go far without attracting the weirdos. Well... Goody, Kate, I hope you have another story of a dude who follows you home for the sake of my podcast. Don't... Oh, fuck. I mean, if something does happen, email me. But for the love of God, just learn how to say no. Carry a rape whistle, something. I don't know. Some people just don't aren't very assertive. <clears throat> and, it, and it just fucks their whole life. <laughs> I can't go far without attracting the weirdos. Thanks for your help. Have a shit one, Kate. Um, yeah, thanks, Kate. Uh, great. I'm, I'm happy that worked out for you. I hope that guy leaves you alone. 
Um, and I hope that you can in the future be a little bit more assertive when you tell people to fuck off. Um, yeah, best of luck to you, Kate. Catch you at a show or something. <laughs> if if you make it that long anyway, if you're still alive by the time I'm doing a show, would love to see you there. Bring all your stalkers along. As long as they pay for tickets, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> all right, last email here. 10 grand. This is a short one. Um, so, Lewis, I've been working at Woolies for two years now. It's a supermarket. I'm 17. I've saved up all of my money and I have 10 grand to use. How should I use it? Have a shit one. Um, yeah, buy a car, man. Absolutely buy a car. Get your parents to help you buy a nice, safe car for learner drivers. Um, <clears throat> buy something that's, you know, that's going to last you a long time. 10 grand, you can get a really nice secondhand car that'll last you until you have money to buy something good. Um, that's the one thing that I regret. When I was a kid, I worked, I had a part-time job and I was earning stacks of money and spending none of it. And then I left high school and I didn't buy a car. I just, I just spent it on dumb shit. Um, and I really wish that I did buy a car when I had the opportunity. You won't regret it because if you don't buy it now, because dude, you're 17. If you buy a car, like the day you hit 18 and you get your fucking license or buy it now, you can start learning when you're 16, buy a car, start learning in it. If the day you hit 18 and you have your license, bro, do you understand? Do you even begin to comprehend how much pussy you're going to get. It's going to be astronomical levels of puss. All right? Be the guy, be the first guy in your high school to have a car and his driver's license. You're going to fucking kill it. Even I got sucked in by the first guy with a car and license. I was like, dude, I want to fuck him. <laughs> yeah, buy a car, man. You definitely won't regret it. Don't buy a shit box. You can get something really nice for like six to $8,000 and you won't regret it. All right? That's my advice. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. <clears throat> I'm sorry if this one started and stopped a little bit. I think there was something wrong with my card, um, but that'll be fixed for next episode. Um, I will see you all at the live podcast, loosespears.com slash live. We're doing it in Brisbane. There's a couple of tickets left. I'll see you there. It'll be next week, and next episode will be episode 100, live on stage. All right? See you later, guys. Have an incredibly shit one.